guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. I have an update on my Rhinoculus. So thank you for all the comments that I got for this because evidently I learned one thing from my comments that I planted my Rhinoculus upside down. Yes, I did. And I did, like I did them upside down. So this is my container that I planted them in. And so I watched a couple of videos on YouTube. One was from the flower farm that I watched and I'll throw her YouTube channel up. And I learned a lot from her, but she's in a different zone from me. And then she also listed a couple of other zones that was in my zone. And I learned a few things from that as well. So for one thing that I learned is that you probably should pre-sprout them. And I kind of did pre-sprout them, but by accident. So anyways, when you pre-sprout them, you have to soak, which I already did soak. And I soaked one for a couple of hours, according to what the instructions that I got from my Dutch garden. But evidently, you're supposed to, to uh, soak them for four hours. And then because they can get bacteria, you have to like change the water out every hour. I did not do that. I did not know to do that. So that's something that I might think about next time. For me, I don't feel like it really mattered in my case this time, but it could have mattered, I don't know. So that may have been like, if you got problems, that may have been a number one problem. So anyways, this was a happy mistake because I actually pre-sprouted these. So because I planted them upside down and I didn't realize that I, planted them upside down. I went ahead and dug them up from here and to see what they looked like because I was gonna like plant them the right way. So evidently you plant these little, what I, it kind of looks like an octopus down because these have already pre-sprouted. Do you see these right here? This is already pre-sprouted and this is where your flower is gonna come up. So I planted them that way you're supposed to plant them this way. But anyways, I guess it doesn't really matter when you are pre-sprouting them. So in order to pre-sprout them, you gotta have a dark place. So because I put these in my container and I covered them with two to three inches of soil, it got its dark, dark darkness. So evidently they went ahead and pre-sprouted for me. So what I'm gonna do, and since then I have learned that they like cold as well. They like the cold ground. So I was gonna keep them in here near my window. And even though I've pre-sprouted them, I'm gonna go ahead and plant them outside into my raised garden bed. So let me show you what some other, some of the other ones look like. Some of them look really, really good. So this is what one of them looks like. Look at that, that's been not even a week, I think. So here's my little pointy things right here. Some people say it looks like an octopus and then it's just like really sprouted everywhere. And then I've got this little thing right here, this which is gonna be my flower, I'm assuming. So that's what one looks like. And that's what the other one looks like. This makes me really happy. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and plant these outside since they're already pre pre-spouted, pre, <laughs> you know what I mean. That's what another one looks like. Yeah, so they're looking pretty good here. And then I was also worried that I may have overwatered them and they can die very easily. So I was like, oh gosh, like, what am I doing? But these look happy, evidently because I had um, a big pot and they had a lot of drainage that they they were not like wet at whatsoever. So look, so yeah, they're all looking good here. So I'm gonna dig all these up and I'm gonna use the soil also in my raised garden bed. I'm gonna reuse that as well. And that was this pot. Remember I did two pots because, let me go get the other pot. And this was the other pot. And I kind of dug around in these two to see what they look like. 
and the same, they look great as well. See, so pretty happy. So like I kind of messed up, but didn't really mess up that bad. So I'm gonna get these all dug up out of here and then we're gonna go outside. Look at this one. We're gonna go outside and replant these in my raised garden bed. Look. You know, they might be just like tulips too. Like they say tulips, if you plant them the wrong way that they will find their way up. And if you don't know how to plant the tulip, just to plant it on its side, cause it will like find its way. And I don't know, maybe that's what these things have done too, because when I'm pulling them up, out of this container, they look like they're fine. So yeah, when I plant them out in the um, raised garden bed, I'm definitely gonna put these little octopusy things down <laughs> instead of up. <laughs> so again, these little things right here that look like tubers, those right there go down in the ground. And thank you guys for letting me know like that I did it wrong. Because I don't know, they may not have turned out right. They may or may not have, I don't know. But they just, they were looking out for me and they wanted to make sure that I was doing it the proper way. So yeah. Now I got messy hands, messy hands. I'm kind of watering some other flowers over here and I talked about my frosty fern. I let my frosty fern dry out. Look you guys, so I'm letting her soak like in this water right here for a good 12 hours today. And so far she's soaked up quite a bit. So hopefully I didn't mess it up. They like a lot of water. You know, this little brush Everybody needs a nice brush. All right, so I'm gonna grab a couple tools and we're gonna go outside and we're gonna plant these in my raised garden bed. All right guys, so I am out in my raised garden bed and this raised garden bed is from Savannah and I do partner with Savannah, so I'll have that link below. And the really nice thing that I like about this bed is that it's metal, it's easy to put together. Like I think we put it together less than 30 minutes or so. I have videos on that if you wanna go back and look how we assembled this and the quality of it as well. And then I like this little trellis that it comes with it because if I have something tall, like if I wanna put dahlias and I put sunflowers, like I was able to stake these on there as well. And it gave it some support because it's got like a loop over here as well. So I have really, really good soil in here because I only had this garden bed for one year and I used some cut flowers in there last year. So I still have a tag from last year. This one's called basil cinnamon that I planted in there. So I'm just making kind of like a trough right here. And it said to plant these ranunculus two to three inches deep. So I'm going to put it about two inches deep. And this soil is really good and worked up. So I'm just going to do this with my hands here. I really like the Savannah bed. It's good quality. It makes gardening easy. If you're new to gardening, you just got to make sure it's, you got to keep the soil moist, which I have drip tubing into mine as well. And I have all videos from the past how I added drip to this. Because I have my rose gardens right behind me and I have drip already in there. So that's all I had to do was kind of hook into that like a, like a puzzle. And then I was able to have water over here as well. All right, so let me drag my corns over here. So like I said, after almost freaking out that I put these 
in upside down, they, they still pre-sprouted for me. And luckily, I was able to learn some stuff. So I still did my research, you guys. Like I still read like how to do this in my zone. And there's still like lots of different opinions, but I'm gonna do what works for everybody else. Like if, if something worked for them, I'm gonna like pretty much do what they did. So luckily I accidentally pre-sprouted these and they need a dark space to pre-sprout. And then I learned that these little tuber things go down. So I'm gonna plant this down like this. So I'm gonna put these probably a good nine inches apart since I have the room. I don't have anything else in here currently. So I'm gonna give them some room. Now, when I planted those in this pot, I had one certain on the outside and a different kind because I got two different varieties of different colors in here. Yeah, I have no idea now. I've already mixed them up. So we're just gonna, oh, I was gonna put some biotone on there. I'm just gonna sprinkle some biotone in here and then just cover them back up. Now, um, another girl from our zone, and I'll throw her uh, blog up. She just had a blog. She was zone eight. And she said that once it starts to get too warm in this zone, then she put a cover up. Of course, you know, it should not be getting anywhere near 70 degrees for me until, look, I'm trying to do this again. For some reason, I wanna naturally put that the other way. Which way did I do this one? I did those right. <laughs> and I lost my train of thought. So I do know, and I learned from her that it takes 90 days for these to mature and give me a bloom. Like I said, the year before, I planted them in the fall, like it said that we should, and then we should get blooms in the springtime, and maybe we had like a really early spring where it was really warm, I don't know, but they never bloomed for me. So I'm gonna hopefully hope for the best the second time. It's probably gonna be good for me. And like I said, we already got these pre-sprouted, and we're gonna put them in this flower bed right here. and hope for the best and I hope I have some gorgeous flowers. So, thanks for the update. Thanks for the guy thanks for the ones that commented. Most of them live in 6B that commented and I'll throw the names up of the who commented and said that um, they think that I did it upside down and I totally did. Totally did it upside down. So, I went ahead and looked up some different people that had success on with YouTube and learned like, how they did it even though I already did my research and I wrote down like all kinds of notes, but I got a little bit additional information that worked for other people as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed this update. And another uh, question that another girl asked me on my amaryllis was, do I need a drain hole when I'm planting amaryllis? And no, like I have never used a drain hole because you grow them inside and I just kind of like monitor my water. Now I'm not gonna soak them in water, but you can also like grow these in nothing but water if you want to. You don't even have to have soil. Those roots can touch the water and they can grow and sprout these blooms. Sometimes they even come in a waxed, uh, something like a wax thing on the outside and they, they, they'll sit there and bloom and then you can reuse them. Of course you have to peel the wax off for those. But anyways, I hope you learned from my mistake today and got some additional information that yeah, you plant these little guys with the little tubers down. <laughs> All right guys, I hope um, you enjoyed this update and I hope I inspired you to get out and like pre-sprout some ranunculus. I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends. 
Okay, so I went ahead and top dressed this with some of the Land and Sea. It's just a natural good compost. This product is from Espoma. Espoma Organic Land and Sea. And if you can't find this in your local store, I'll link that Amazon link to you. And this is the Savannah Garden right here. So nice and sturdy it's made out of metal it'll last forever 20 plus years it's put together really well it's easy to put together and i love this trellis that it comes with it does come with a couple of covers too that's why it comes with the trellis and they just go right on top of there so if i want to put a frost free uh, covering over this i can do that now as well